Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and uh, well, if this feels like deja vu, it kind of is. We were here at the beginning of Elvis Fest, Elvis Week, and um, as you could tell in my video, there were people walking around. The, the museum was already open, but today is the official grand opening. We were here for the soft opening. They've been doing tours, and they've been had the museum open and everything, but uh, today they're officially having a karate class with Kong Ri's son who will be instructing it and we've been invited to come and explore the adventure so that's what we're gonna do. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Wow take a look at this motorcycle. What a tribute. That's when he was winning that's the only award show he ever attended. Look at that. Elvis and Gladys, the glasses. <laughs> they say he he told the sheriff of Shelby County if they didn't give him a sheriff's badge that he'd run against him to get one. Look at that! Wow. That's all signed by family members and band members. Look at that. Lisa Marie. And the Tupelo home. Wow. It's even called CC Rider. Look at the sea. The peacocks. And he's got James Burton's guitar pick. Wow, look at that. There's stuff everywhere. This guy's motorcycle's amazing. And look at this side. Wow. Look at that, Larry Geller, Elvis's hairstylist right there on, and spiritual buddy, Red West. All right, let's make our way inside. As you can tell, it is a full house, including the spa guy. He came to beat me up. Yeah, we're trying to get started on time, but we're unfortunately not going to. But they're already over there working out. You know. I think he sees the writing on the wall that the people keep showing up. So, <laughs> so real deal. Yong Ri, Kong Ri's son. Have you ever had There's like the whole Smith family over there. 
Memphis Mafia Kid YouTube channel. Well, what a lucky day for me. I get to meet the famous Billy Smith. The Billy Smith I've seen in about a million photographs around Graceland. You were Elvis's cousin, but best friend. I think everybody agrees you were the best friend. Well, only Elvis answer that, but yeah. I, yeah. And I you. He was my first cousin. And when I think. I was his first cousin. Yeah, and you, like, there all the motorcycle photographs. You're on the back of the motorcycle with him. You're, he's in anywhere he is, there you are. Well, yeah, I, we did a lot together. He was a little, little boy, you know, he uh, always kind of took care of him. Like a brother almost. Yeah, but, you know, he, he, he always liked to tell people he raised me. Hey, that he raised you? Well, you, it's really cool. You have your own YouTube channel where you guys share very intimate personal sto stories about Elvis. Yeah. What's the name of your channel for my viewers? It's called uh, the Memphis Mafia Kid. Memphis Mafia Kid. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, you can go in there and type in you know, Memphis Mafia Kid. And, and it'll bring it up and it'll bring up, you know, Danny, who is my oldest son. Uh, Danny and Joey and you. Joey and me and, my wife. and what's yeah. great is sometimes you might just see some kind of odd artifact somewhere and it'll trigger a great story that nobody would have thought was floating around yeah, out there. Of course, I mean, I still kind of pride myself in my memory, and I still can keeping him so many different things because I think when it's instilled in you for so long, you know, and, and being like Albert, you know, being with him, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hang with you more than. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, than life. Do you feel inside you almost an obligation to to keep the great memories of Elvis alive I to him, know, or? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would have liked that response. <laughs> no. He, yes. I, you know, I, uh, I mean, I tell people I, I can never repay him. You know, he has done for me. You know, it had to be such a cool thing. You you lived at Graceland and and maybe just walking through the house all of a sudden you say pack your bags we're going to Hawaii we're going to what kind of life is that to live when you Fabulous, yeah man. when you don't know what's going to happen an hour from stuff. now you don't have to pay for nothing everything's there and you with the biggest icon of the country I mean who could ask for more you don't get bored <laughs> he wouldn't let you did he push you to do things out of your comfort zone that maybe you weren't you well, normally wouldn't have done he would threaten me yeah either you do it or i'm gonna fight you you know <laughs> uh no he uh i was in just about anything he wanted to do that's great we uh we did a lot of crazy stuff you know. of course i don't know if you, a lot of people will know what i'm talking about about the videos but like bulldozing that old house and i lived in down I mean, we took a bulldozer me and him and went through that house I heard he just did, he wanted to d destroy a house so bad, like he couldn't yeah, yeah. wait. He, we did, we leveled it, boy, and then we pushed it all up. And I love that, that's such, I mean, you have such great stories, and, and the fact that you're keeping them alive on such something free, like YouTube, that people can come and connect with you, I love that, I think that's so great. We, and, uh, we had, yeah, like I say, we had an exciting life. Just, you know. How did life change for you? Do you I mean, did you find yourself not knowing what you were going to do with yourself or did, did you just have interests that you immediately went into after that because uh, it just seems like so many people when they tell stories of Elvis it's like you lived on his time in a way like well you had to yeah you know, it's like his, his time was your time or you couldn't make it you know? yeah uh, the, the man had such energy about it you know? he, uh, had weird hours that he stayed up and all that. So you know, if you didn't live the life that Elvis was leaving, you wasn't gonna make it. You got left behind. Too much, you know, too much, too quick. You know, I mean, you sleep wise, you know. Yeah. Most of us left his hours. Wow, what a life you've lived. And and I I don't you know one of the things I I, I know it's not probably like 
the best thing to remember, but it, you, you did happen to be there and listen to him sing his last songs, which to me is just, must, have been, must just be something for you that those songs must mean a lot now. I bet. Do you, uh, can you listen to those songs now? Or do they... Do, that's what I wonder if, if it's a sadness or a happiness thing now. Yeah. Blue eyes crying in the rain, I change every time I hear them, you know, naturally. It, it uh, brings back a sad part of it, but too, I remember when he recorded it. So, uh, you know, too, that's, that's the best way to look at it, a celebration of his life. Uh, so you have two mixed, you know, sides to it. You know? Yeah. The thought side when he was recording them, listening to him, and then... You know, uh, part of was the last two songs that he, you know, he sang. So. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for sitting here with me and, and also having the Memphis Mafia Kid channel out there that everyone can follow. So everybody go over and subscribe to Memphis Mafia Kid right. and drop yeah. Billy and Danny and Joey a line over there. Yes, sir. And if you have any questions, just, you know, comment section of our video. Uh, you know, it's the Memphis Mafia Kid. And, you know, on YouTube, so you got right up. <laughs> so we're inside. This is something that um, that the spa guy was kind of telling me about because I was wondering. They sell badges, like you see in Elvis's hand over here, and he was showing me that he had recently acquired this suit. And I figured, let him tell you guys the story of the badge and the suit and everything. Okay. So I did a story, uh, I'm gonna take my glasses off so I don't look too old. I did a story with a guy named Gene Ultra Turner. I met him in Tupelo. In 1970, the uh, Lee County Sheriff's Department in, uh, in Tupelo, Mississippi gave Elvis a sheriff's badge, which was a, the typical star badge, you know, mm -hmm. the typical. And they have these, uh, the police departments have these giveaway badges that are real, you know, they're not the quality right. that a real badge is. And they don't carry any, any power or anything like that. Well, they wanted Elvis to have a cooler badge that was that was made specifically for him. So they had a badge made, and the lady, Janelle McComb, that lives in Tupelo, that knew Elvis, was friends with Elvis, chose somebody to present it to Elvis. They And Gene Autry Turner was his name, and is his name. He still lives in Tupelo, owns a gas station there. Was such a big Elvis fan that she chose him to be the one to present it to Elvis. So this is the photo of Gene and Elvis in the living room or in the foyer of Graceland and you can see Elvis has a badge in his hand in a case That is the badge that you see on display over there and Gene came here 50 years to the day that he handed Elvis that badge and we gave Gene his badge So 50 years to the day we presented him with the badge to commemorate that 50 years That's a long time that is and he brought the suit again We filmed with Tom Salva Tom Salva actually has the real badge and we filmed with him and that was the first time that Gene had seen that badge since he gave it to Elvis. So we reunited that, and that would have been 2019 maybe. After that, um, Gene came and brought the suit here, and he left it with us so we could put it on display. And we had a, uh, a fan, Brent, I'm sorry Brent, I'm gonna mess up your name. Uh, Brent loaned us the belt and the pants and the shirt so we could create this display. Gene bought that suit specifically for that day to go to Graceland to meet Elvis, and he was so excited. If you hadn't seen the video, you need to see it. He said something, we, you were at the Ginger thing the other day, and it's yep. something that you remember Ginger said, if you cut, the Elvis told her, if you cut me, I bleed. That's right. In 1971, he told Gene the same thing. Gene grabbed him by the arm. Elvis came downstairs, and Gene said, he said, I grabbed him by the arm, and he said, I was feeling him, and he said, he said, so you are real. He said, he said, man, if you cut me, I bleed. Just like he told Ginger. Yeah. So I thought that was incredible, that little saying. That is. And he said, I held him around his, around his waist all the way through the house to the trophy room. He said, for hours. I walked with him just like that. I wouldn't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it with that suit right there on, and he's never dry cleaned it and never worn it again. Wow. He bought it for that specific thing, and it ended up in an iconic photograph, and you can see that photograph right there. And you guys actually offer that badge here signed by, by Gene. Gene Autry. Yeah, we have some, we don't have all of them signed by Gene, but what we did was we put, we had actually another uh, uh, Elvis fan, 
sent us the card to go in it sent us you know he made one up to go in it and gene signed the back of a lot of them that's because i thought it was a cool uh thing uh a cool uh, it's kind of a different thing, you know. What I'm it saying? is a different take on. Uh, and Elvis used to collect those badges, oh. so it's not like he only had one in his life. He collect, he forced people to give them. He to would him. take them from the cops, try to take their badges, and a lot of times they would give them up and get in trouble. And uh, and Elvis was a was a badge guy. He got a badge from Nixon. Yeah, you know, he went there and uh, and got one and actually st uh, stopped an airplane with that badge one time. But that's a different story. <laughs> So that you're, you kind of have an athletic stance right here, okay? Normally it's more like this, but this is kind of big. I don't want you to be like, oh, my, my leg is <laughs> just, just a little bit of bend so that kind of you feel a little bit of a, when you, a little bit of muscle tension right here. Okay? You're kind of, and it's kind of springy. All right, from here, okay, make a fist again, okay? Okay, this time, let's just kind of push it out, both of them out, this way, okay? Both out, okay, right here, what I want you to do is, again, uh, let's just push your chest back, okay? Okay, before you do that, just kind of, let's just kind of, you see my chest? You don't want to be like this, okay? It has to be, straighten your back, your chest out, okay? And then, relax your shoulders, okay? We're well, not just gonna do this for right now. We're just, just gonna roll your shoulders around, okay? Relax your shoulders, because you don't want to be like, when you're doing it, you want to be very relaxed. So right here, okay, your, your shoulders are relaxed, okay, and then chest back. So let's just kind of push this this down this way. Okay, now feel the uh, the the two front levels. Okay, you got it. Let's just kind of push it you know, right here. Good, good, good. Okay. Right here. So we're gonna take right hand back. Okay? Twist it. See how that this thing twists? Right here. And then straight back. This way. Right here. Okay? So we're gonna pull the resisting one and then push the other one back. Right here. I'm just gonna meet in the middle right here. Everybody Everywhere in the middle, you need to just go down. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm pushing the corners, I'm not feeling like I'm saying you want. If you feel it's really great, it's great. It's you could it's be like, you know, that's much. You know, but a lot of times you might lose. You don't want to be like this and then like, he's going to do it. That's what you're going to do. 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 So, so there's always, as you're punching, there's always counter move, which is good. It's very balanced. And you're working the whole muscle. Okay, right? Pushing it forward. In order to get healthy your mind, you have to go through your body. If your body is kind of like, oh, like, you know, you're a slob and you, you, just like, you know, you don't, you don't have a discipline, then your mind, you know, is the same way. So, you have, in order to kind of discipline your mind, you have to discipline your body. That was it. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's like, sometimes I think, yeah. But it's not much with your leg than your arm. By rotating your head. See how that you get longer than this here? But if I rotate, it's longer. And I went ahead and made some purchases inside. Let's show you what I got. I bought an authentic piece of the Kung Ri World Headquarters carpet that Elvis would have taken his karate classes on. 
for a mirror, $14.99. Very cool, I'll frame that. And one of those cool replica, and it's heavy. I mean, it feels like a real badge, one of the EAP Elvis, like that story that Spa Guy told us inside. And I got one that was signed on the back. Right there by Gene Autry Turner. How cool. I love that they're doing that. Like Billy said, he, we just want to do something that's different than what else is out there. Something cool that people want to have. Something for Elvis fans that's not just so kitschy. You know, we want to do something that has a story behind it. Very, very cool. Well, my friends, what a fun day. We got to meet Billy Smith. We got to hang out with the spa guy. We got to see, actually, all the Smith family were here. We got to see the man who taught Elvis karate, his son, continuing on the lineage here, giving classes every weekend, and what a great day. If you're in town, come to the Tiger Man Karate Dojo Museum and uh, go follow Memphis Mafia Kid and the Spa Guy. And until next time, we're gonna call it a night. From Elvis Week here in Memphis, Tennessee, good, 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 goodbye! Yeah.